It's true that the body doesn't doesn't lie, but the body is playful and layered. But when your body is your mode of expression, it is terrifying and exhilarating. There's layers, but there's no there's no masking. You're not playing a character. You're yourself. And you can exaggerate that and push that in various directions, but it's you and whatever phase you're in in that moment, you're always changing. So you're pushing your body to be the purest expression of itself. I mean, you talk about risk and creative failure, and there's, that's so loaded, and there's so much inside of just that question. But it's true, there, there's the risk artistically, there's the, the risk logistically, financially, and then emotionally, there's a risk there. And then there's this word failure, which is an interesting word because failure implies an expected outcome. And so depending on how tight or specific your expected outcome is, that tempers your definition of failure around that. And so it's funny because this piece that I made called Fail Better, um, which comes from a Beckett quote, something like try, fail, fail again, fail better. But the fail better part always stuck with me. And um, it really is just a physical manifestation of these attempts. And then each attempt falls apart. And just as soon as you think you understand the rules, the rules change. And at the time I had a a one-year-old, so I was new to parenting and I was acutely aware of how absurd it is to try to master parenthood because as soon as you understand one phase, the kid's off to the next phase. And performance is similar and your relationship to the audience is similar. There's, you need to pay close attention to what's happening, but as as much as you think you understand it, it's changing. So you have to keep up with that. So the piece ended up being kind of an absurd expression of uh, these changing rules. But at the same time, my relationship to failure and risk was changing in the sense that I was starting to draw really long timelines for pieces and trying to take on bigger questions. So because I was so excited about the audience and I, throughout my life, my relationship to audience had changed from sharing something from a stage to physical comedy where you could really have an audio conversation between people, you really hear what their response is and learning the the timing that it, it takes to to create that relationship and then wanting to really get into the same space with the audience get off of the stage and actually perform with them so after that piece it dawned on me that I wanted them to actually step inside of an environment like the one that we made and felt better and I wanted them to touch the objects. I wanted them to have the the failures and the illuminations and to walk the path of the main character. So in that way, that piece was a huge success in the sense that it led me to a whole new way of working. These six solo journeys intersect and diverge so that they spend some time alone 
They spend some time with other dancers. They spend some time with the environment. And they spend some time with each other. So there's some choreographed interactions between two audience members at times. Hello. I'm glad that you are here. And I'm glad that you chose this seat. I won't always be with you. I move around. But I'm still here. That woman sitting across from you. What if you could see what she has seen? What if she knew what you were thinking? What if you could do the things that she has done? She's leaving. Follow her. Place your hand on the wall. Place your back against the wall. Step forward. Step forward again. Place your hand on her shoulder. Offer your hand. Move to a different place in the room. Logistically, it was a huge risk to put this together because every, I'm hoping for improvisational moments where the audience members can react and the timing can be their own. But I'm also necessitating precise meeting up points. So if you sit across from another audience member in your headset and it says, offer your hand, and that person's headset says, take the hand, that hand has to be extended at the exact moment so that the other person knows what hand you're talking about, so that they can have a seamless interaction. So going back and forth between open improvisations and experiments with my dancers, get test audiences, and then sitting at home with a spreadsheet and mapping things out to the second. And then there's this maze that we created so that there's 12 different rooms. And I didn't make it easy on myself. We, the audience members don't switch. Each section's not the same length. So a two-minute section, and then there's a six-minute section happening. So one audience member ends and is wandering the hallways by themselves while everybody else is still in moments, and then someone else leaves. And then I want someone to peer in a window and watch the middle of something they've just done so that things are staggered just enough so that they see someone doing something that they've just done but with different dancers. All of that felt really important to me in the grand scheme of thinking of both small scale and large scale about how we're very much alone in the uniqueness of our own experience, yet we're surrounded by all of these other similar interactions. Similar, but not the same. It's a project I didn't think I would be able to make because there's no ticket income. There's six people at a time for an hour. So <laughs> really it's like a lot more people performing than seeing the piece. So it's financially a mess. It doesn't make any sense. So there was um, something called the Night Arts Challenge that came to Philadelphia. And you could put in a one paragraph about a, a crazy idea you had. And they got 2,000 of these paragraphs. And it got selected. And it was a challenge grant. So they gave me $50,000. But then I had to raise 50000 in order to get it. So that was a financial challenge for me to raise the additional fifty. And dollars um, so we did, and then we had, the, we had the budget to spend three years researching this project, coming up with the software to figure out how to make six audio tracks happen simultaneously, to hire two sound designers because we needed to design the sound but also logistically implement these tracks, to get the dancers on board to do a lot of showings and bring test audiences in to, to make this piece. I feel very grateful that I was able to make it. If you're willing to change your mindset, then each failure is actually a, an opportunity. So you just have to be ready to let the road curve.
have come to the end of your time here with us. There's a woman in the doorway. Follow her.